Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I want you to, if you haven't already, I need you to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and then give it a thumbs up and share the video. Today, we're going to have a Bible study, and the Bible study is called, Is It Important and Can We Know? Is it important and can we know? And again, I said this is going to be a Bible study, so I'm going to ask a question and give you an answer that is from the Bible. All right, let's see what the Bible has to say on this subject. Is it important and can we know? And you say, Diane, what is this talking about? It's talking about God. Okay, so let's see what we can learn from this um, Bible study today. So my first question is, is God pleased when his people do not know him? Is he pleased when... His people do not know him. And you say, of course, if these people claim to know God, they obviously know him. But in Hosea, uh, this is the Old Testament, Hosea 4, verse 1, it says, Hear the word of the Lord. Now, when you see the word Lord in all capitals in the Old Testament, it means Yahuwah or Yahweh. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. So, is he pleased when his people don't know him? No. Uh, a controversy means a strife or dispute, a quarrel, something against. So, he has something against the people who do not know him, but yet they profess to know him. So, what's the duty? What's the whole duty of man? Well, in Ecclesiastes twelve thirteen. It's also in the Old Testament. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for the whole, this is the whole duty of man. So what does it mean to fear God? The Bible writers often use a style of writing called parallelism, where they would write a thought and then repeat it using different words yet implying the same thing so let's see in proverbs 1 verse 7 it says fear the lord or remember yahuwah yahweh is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction in proverbs 9 verse 10 it says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Then Proverbs 2, 5. Thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So here's three different ways the fear of the Lord is used. And fear of the Lord is both in all three cases is the knowledge of God. So having fear is having knowledge okay so what is the first message that we are to give in these last days there's a message that the people of god are to give in these last days and what is it let's look at revelation 14 verse 7 and it says saying with a loud voice fear god give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. This is part of what we call the first angel's message to bring us back to a knowledge of God. Now, this is what I said in the beginning. God has a problem with people who profess to know him and don't know him. Okay, so is it important that we know God? Hosea 4, 6 said, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shouldst be a people, no priest, I'm sorry, to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So here, if you're going to give a message and you don't really know who God is, then that's a problem, okay? That's a problem. So, 
Why is knowing God important? Why is it knowing God important? John 17, 3. Now we're in the New Testament. John 17, 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Okay, before I go on with this verse, I need you to understand this is Jesus praying. This is Jesus' prayer. The Lord's prayer is not Jesus praying. The Lord's prayer that we hear, the Lord's prayer, our Father which art in heaven, is teaching the disciples how to pray. Okay, but this is actual his prayer. He's praying to the Father, Yahuwah. And he's saying that this is how you have eternal life. is to know God, which who is the Father, and Jesus Christ, whom he sent, which is his son. This is how you have eternal life. You got to know these two. You got to know the Father, and you got to know and accept his son, whom he sent. All right? And 2 Peter 1, 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay? So it's important to know who God is. What does knowing God involve? All right, so what does knowing God involve? First of all, we can know who he is. Knowing who he is, 2 Timothy 1, 12. For that which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So know who he is, and then you can have confidence in him, okay? Paul knew who God was. I say was in his, in his sense, in his time, but he, of course he knows who he is. That is why he was able to declare him to those who worship him ignorantly. And that's in Acts 17.3. He was able to say there was a situation where they had a sign that said, okay, and also unto the unknown God. But he says, okay, I know who this God is, and let me tell you who he is. So he knew who God was, so he could introduce him to people who didn't know. And so a lot of times people think they know, and they don't know. Uh, another thing is, know his ways, his glory, and his character. Uh, this is in Exodus 33, verse 13. Now therefore, I pray thee. If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider this nation is thy people. Okay, so we can know him, his ways, his glory, and his character. In uh, the same chapter, verse 18, it says, And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory so in the first verse in verse 13 he says now thy way and in this verse he said glory so those way and glory are the same remember i said you can know his ways his glory and his character and so these two words here mean the same in exodus 34 6 and 7 it says and the lord passed before him and proclaim the Lord or Yahuwah or Yahweh remember the Lord the Lord God merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and fourth generation of them of of sorry until the fourth generation of God's character is here displayed as his glory. His glory is displayed as his character. And we said ways, glory, and character is a way we can know God. His ways, his glory, and his character. First John 4, 7 through 9 says, Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God.
God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. So now here's a way of knowing God through his love, okay? Uh, if we don't have love, we don't know God. And if uh, we don't know God because we don't know, we don't accept or know his son who he sent and his only son who he sent. God had a son, sent his son, okay? So to know God is to love God. Knowing God, love of God, and man loves because God loves. Why do we love him? Because he first loved us. Also, keeping his commandments. Second, um, I'm sorry, Timoth uh, Titus 1.16 says, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him because being an abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. All right, so here this text is telling us those who profess to know him are really uh, denying him because the things that they do are disobedient and their lives don't line up. So knowing God leads to obeying him. Doctrine is not the end. It is a means to know him better, to get us closer. But as a result of knowing him, having his life and the life of his son dwelling in us, we also obey him. All right. So what must I do to know him intimately. That might be a question you have. Well, what must I do to know him intimately? And this is Proverbs. Let's see. I think it's two, chapter 2, verse um, 3 through 5. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure, then thou shalt, then thou, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. How will you uh, get to know Him intimately? If you seek for Him, He's already seeking for you. You just gotta reach out and seek for Him. Seek for Him as silver, as treasure. Uh, then it says, thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord, the way of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the character of the Lord, whatever, and find knowledge in him. So, uh, can we know God? Can we know who God is? God has revealed himself to us in his word. Romans 1.20 for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And I want you to know right here now that word Godhead is only, I think it's three times in the Bible, and it only means divinity. It has to do with his nature. It has no numerical value at all. It just means his divinity, his God nature. Okay? And 1 John 5.20 says, this is with the, still, the same question that I asked, can we know who God is and has God revealed himself in his word? 1 John 5.20 says, and we know that the Son of God has come. And has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even the son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God and eternal life. Now, I think a lot of people misunderstand this verse. And I might have to go over chapter 5 uh, so that you can see this uh, in context. But it's saying that we know Jesus, the Son of God, but we also know him that is true. Now, who is him that is true? It's the Father, because Jesus said that, and this is John, the writer of the same book that I got uh, the prayer from. So he's not 
uh, mixing anything up. He knows what he's talking about. Jesus prayed to his father, Yahuwah, and he told us in that, he told, he said in his prayer that Yahuwah was the only true God. So here John concludes that when we know the son of God, which is Jesus, that he has come, then that gives us understanding so that we may know him that is true, who is the father. And we are in him that is true, which is the father, even in Jesus Christ. So see, it's talking about two different beings. We are in him that is true, even in Jesus, the son. Okay. This is the true God and eternal life. John 17, 3 told us that the Father was the true and only God. Okay? Go back and look at it in its entirety. So, what is the only thing um, we can give glory in? What is the only thing we can give glory in? In Jeremiah uh, 9, 23 and 24, it reads like this. It says, Thou, I'm sorry, it says, Thus saith the Lord, or Yahuwah, it's talking about the Father, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty men glory in his might. Let not the rich glory in their riches, but let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, Yahuwah, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord Yahuwah. All right, so this was just a little quick Bible study I wanted to share with you. It is important to know who God is, and we'll explore this continually at some point in time. But I just wanted to share this with you today, and I hope it was a blessing um, to you. And um, may the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all until we meet again in the next video. All right? Shalom.